Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, it was 9-3, and Uri Slavkovsky has his first NHL hat trick. You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 1047 of Locked On Canadians, your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day of the week. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase today. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matla, as always, and I'm joined, as always, by the Active Stick. Laura Saba and my neighbors who are making noise in the hallway. My apologies for that. Uh, Laura, <laughs> uh, we talked a lot about, hey, the Flyers are desperate. Are they going to come out and, you know, try and fight for their playoff lives and everything against the Montreal Canadiens? Uh, and pretty emphatically, we got our answer very quickly in this game. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. I I did not expect this kind of game. And I saw lots of people headed on their way to the game today. And I was like, what version of the Habs versus the Flyers are you going to get? Uh, And it turns out it was amazing. And uh, obviously, uh, like, there's so many stories, like, truly so many stories. Like, where do we start? Vorak, Slavkovsky, Mike Matheson, who we talked about. I like, I honestly, I don't know. But I think one of the biggest things is that Uri Slavkovsky's first career NHL hat trick uh, was not overshadowed by a loss or other, you know, storylines. Like, not only was he one of the stars of the show, the entire show as a whole was just such a positive note. How can you be disappointed? And I know Tank, blah, blah, blah. How can you be disappointed in the Montreal Canadiens not just taking advantage of their opportunities against the Flyers, but laying down a curb stomping? There are four players on the Montreal Canadiens who did not record a point tonight, not counting the two goalies. Can you name the four of them, Laura? Oh, God. No, don't make me do it. Even Anderson had points. (laughs) That's the wildest part is that. So the four players who did not have points tonight were Michael Pozzetta, finished the night, plus two, three shots, four hits. Uh, Jake Evans, plus one, three shots in 14 minutes. Uh, Jaden Struble, no points, uh, plus two, two penalty minutes, one shot on goal. And Justin Barron, plus two, one shot on goal, one hit. Uh, this was, so bad. No, this was a very fun game in a lot of different ways in that, like, Montembeau ends the night with a 917 save percentage with three goals against. He still made 30, uh, 33 saves on 36 shots because the Canadians basically took the third period off and they could at this point. And I think in this, looking at this game here, it started with something that we love. It looked like it was a Mike Matheson goal right out of the gate, minute and five seconds in. Ended up going off of, I believe, either the bottom part of the stick or the skate of Uri Slavkovsky, which plays into all of this. Uh, That gave Caulfield 60 points on the season. Uh, and then Matheson and Suzuki followed it up with another pair of assists. Matheson, I believe, now is over 60 points on the season as well, which is fantastic for him. Uh, Nick Suzuki continues to be incredible. And then something weird happened. Brendan Gallagher was just kind of left alone in front of uh, Samuel Erson at this point. It is a 2 nothing game. The Flyers had kind of been pushing, been pushing, and seemed to be the team growing into the game. And then they just didn't, they just decided to not guard Brendan Gallagher in front of the net. He deflects it. 40 seconds later, Uri Slavkovsky takes a beautiful leading feed from David Savard, of all people, (laughs) on a breakaway, buries the hat trick goal. And at that point, the game just spirals because then, a minute and 20 seconds later, Josh Anderson finally uses his strength and his speed. He drives around the edge, tucks it into the post. He scores. 
Christian Dvorak then scores. It is a six, nothing game at this point. And the Canadians scored those five goals in the span of less than seven minutes. When I say reeling, absolutely reeling Christian Dvorak and Brendan Gallagher added other goals later on. And then Yol Armia at the end of the game, this was really, really impressive from the Canadians. And I know that, Oh, the flyers maybe aren't as good as they look at. This is a team fighting for their playoff life. Um, Maybe not so much anymore. And the Canadians (laughs) just decided that they were going to come out and they were going to make it everybody's problem tonight. Good penalty kill again, physical within the rules, really strong in the defensive zone on cleaning up opportunities and making the most of their chances. Jordan Harris had three assists in this game, and we're not even going to talk about that too much because it gets buried in so much else. Three point night for Brendan Gallagher, three point night for Slavkovsky, two for Dvorak, two for Armia, two for Matheson, two for Kovacevic, three for Harris. The Habs put up points, and the th- first line barely played after Slavkovsky's hat trick because why bother? I mean, they need the rest. They've been carrying this entire this team for this entire season. Um, but it's kind of funny that that's what they did, you know, like resting your best players, kind of like a playoff team. Um, I did enjoy that. Uh, I just I feel like with this team there are moments when you feel things clicking and that energy is infectious. Now we know we've seen it before. This does not mean that Josh Anderson has mounted a comeback and is going to be able to score 40 goals or anything like that. Um, But it does feel like when this team's best players play really well, it's no longer just a matter of them only. Like you find that the other players are stepping up their game in a way to kind of, keep up but also it enables them to be their best like it it, you know it it just it clears the way for them to take risks and try and improve their own games like these are not world-class elite athletes they're good guys I'm sure but they're depth like these players are depth so I just I find that when that attitude permeates the entire team and you see this kind of performance like it's I mean, when I call it scrappy, like against the Flyers, it wasn't scrappy. It was dominant. But you see them like scraping everything they can out of what they have. And that's really what you want. Like that mentality is what you want because eventually what they have will be a lot more talented than what it is now. And there's not going to like there's you you aren't going to be able to stop a team like that. And I look at a game like this and that and it's worth repeating because we'll talk about one of the other injuries before the game in our next segment to cover some stuff there, but Christian Dvorak hasn't played since I want to say it was December when he went out with his injury Uh, over like the last 20 or so games. He now has more goals than the guy that he was essentially traded for in Carolina. (laughs) And he's played one game. And yes, I know sample sizes and all that. And I should be more respectful and blah, blah, blah. No, but it's, this is a team that is battling for, I, I, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I don't want to say confidence because they don't lack confidence. They're they're trying to prove that this is the start of something else. Uh, we saw it last year down the stretch that Josh Anderson was trying to prove that he can be that guy next season. And absolutely, he was showing that. And then he got a high ankle sprain, ended his season. But a guy like Brendan Gallagher, maybe not having the season that he wanted. This was the kind of vintage performance you want from, want from him. His second goal brushes off the defender, comes in, cuts to the front of the net, and tucks it home. His assist to Yoel Armia is he's drawing a goalie who is not aware of this two-on-one playing out perfectly over to his side. All the little things you want to see players do, I was seeing in this game. And, like, we didn't see a lot of the top six in this. And you know what? We didn't have to in this game because everybody else was stepping up. Christian Dvorak was the fourth-line center tonight in this game. Now you're going to look at the time on ice there and be like, ah, I don't really know about that because he only played 12 and a half minutes. The only peop- the only person who played less than him was Michael Pozzetta, which is a good thing. Rest some of these guys that, like you said, have been carrying the weight uh, up next for the Canadians. And I'm sure you'll talk about this in the episode tomorrow. The Islanders, who are also fighting for their playoff life, and I am just checking the scoreboard today because I believe they were beating the Rangers the last I checked. Yep, the Islanders beat the Rangers 4-2. 
Now we're going to go over to the standings, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on. The Islanders are in the last Metro playoff spot and everything, but we'll talk about more of the Metro and everything later on. We unfortunately have injury news to get to uh, relating to one of the Jekai brothers, and I guess we'll throw two things in one there, and we'll get into that and more coming up next. But first, when you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could just hand pick the best stars for your business team as well? And if you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place so you don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all at Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews and if you hate waiting indeed's us data shows over 80 percent of indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job i went through the whole job thing last year indeed was so incredible i got matched with the people who played to my strengths and wanted me for what my strengths were and right now you can join over 3 million businesses worldwide using indeed to hire great talent fast because indeed knows when you're growing your own business you have to make every dollar count and that's why with indeed you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements so visit indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now indeed.com slash locked on that one more time is indeed.com slash locked on Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everybody. And remember, when you need to hire, you need Indeed. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. And while we all had a lot of fun looking at uh, looking down on the Philadelphia Flyers tonight because Uri Slavkovsky is tall and he had a trap trick. And I'm sure the Arizona Coyotes Twitter admin is having a terrible night, which... Again, not really all that sad about. Uh, the news today wasn't all good around the Montreal Canadiens. Hey, Christian Dvorak's back. Hooray. That's good. That's great. He was supposed to be done for the year. A couple of points in his return to the lineup. Love that. That had to coincide with the news that Arbor Jacki is getting season-ending shoulder surgery. He will be ready for training camp in the spring, which tells me that it's potentially not too serious, but serious enough that he could not play through it. And there are a couple of things I want to touch on with this. The first thing is it is his left shoulder this year. It was his right shoulder last year. Uh, his right shoulder was, I believe he uh, separated it or dislocated it and did some damage to his joint there when he punched Vincent DeHarnay really, really hard in the face against the Oilers. Uh, this year, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of I'm going to speculate within what I saw in this game. Uh, when Mikey Isamont uh, tackled him from behind and Jack I is trying to spin and get a hold of him and they're tussling, his shoulder kind of got wedged at a weird angle there. And I'm wondering if in that fight, uh, something just either was worn down from the year or something else happened. But uh, all that does is one, make me more infuriating or infuriated that it happened. And two, I'm kind of sad that his season's going to be over now. Uh, I know there's only four games left at this point, but it's it's kind of brutal news uh, for a guy who seemed to finally be taking that next step in his overall game. But thankfully, we'll see him back for training camp next season. Right. And that's the thing. Like, it was kind of tough for him this season. But what I really liked about it was he kept trying to make the most of every situation. He never uh, complained, didn't whine. You know, they threw him in Laval and he just all he did was play phenomenally there. Um, I do feel bad because, you know, the games are just more fun with him in them. Um, but at the same time, I think it's best that he stay and heal so that he can come back next year and continue to enthrall fans. I, and the thing is, is that I love that he is, Hey, I am the punchiest of dudes. I am the toughest guy on the ice, but we've seen him more and more refined parts of his game. Uh, we still don't know what's going on with Caden Gooley. He did skate before practice today. Uh, I believe he was in a non-contact Jersey. My hope is that maybe he's back for the weekend. I'd like to see Gooley be able to get those final few games here. But as we learned last year, you don't need to rush him. He got hurt 
like two weeks before the season ended in a weird game against Florida. Uh, part of that was because he got uh, tackled basically by current teammate Colin White into the end boards and no one was happy <laughs> about it. Uh, it's just, I'm glad they're being preca- using precaution on this, that if it's bad enough, don't wait, just get it done at this point, because this is now an opportunity for Justin Barron to, Hey, prove you belong in this lineup here. And if you can't do that, then we kind of reassess things and it opens the door for, you know, Lane Hudson. When that time comes, they play in, when you're hearing this, it'll be on Thursday, but two days from the time that we are recording this. Uh, but the good news is the amount of healthy Jack eyes in the Montreal Canadiens organization remains the same, even with Arbor Jack eye done for the year as the Canadians have signed his brother, Florian Jack eye to an entry level contract starting in the 2024, 2025 season. He has joined the Laval rocket in Cleveland for practice tomorrow. The team traveled today. Uh, and if I understand, and I'm guessing at the bus route here, based on the video they posted, they would have left Montreal, driven straight down the 401 through Ontario, down through the border. So they would have passed through Buffalo here, straight down south, uh, 90 south into Pennsylvania and over to Cleveland and Ohio, to which I say, good Lord, that's a whole lot of staring at absolutely nothing for a long period of time on a bus with like 25 other dudes no thanks at all uh i'm excited i know we had talked about it it's the first time we've ever talked about something and then it actually happened the day after we talked about it which is really fun uh so that's a rare feather in our cap for being right uh laura i know that i know one who like babies the rocket and you know covers all that between the two of us but we should probably, what are your expectations, you know, going into uh, Jack Eye joining the Rocket now? I think I mean, they're in the very, very important playoff push. Um, and I, I believe we have in the past called for things and then the Canadians didn't do them. And then eventually they did them and we turned out to be correct. Um, uh, in this case, I think, I think it's going to inject them with some energy which I really think they need. It's going to give them a boost to their confidence. Like as, as we know, like they're in the fight of their lives and it's going to be very, very hard. Um, and for me, like any body is a good body, but one that can perform um, and one that has not necessarily something to prove. I feel like his OHL season was pretty good for that, but just someone who is just looking to, to take the next step and improve his own game. I feel like that's what he's going to bring. And, you know, any kind of reinforcement the Rocket can get at this point is good. Because I was talking to somebody about this. And they're like, is he going to be like his brother that he's going to hurt a bunch of people and that because he gets tossed out of games in junior and he's physical and he's always getting involved in things. And I get that the reputation with the name precedes, you know, the player here. But I kind of look at Arbor when he went to the NHL level. He's not throwing dirty hits. Sometimes, you know, he's right on that borderline, but I don't think he's straying into five-minute major Tom Wilson territory here. He's playing on a line and being a guy that that's strong can deliver some kind of devastating hits to people there. I look at Florian Jekai as someone that you can have develop a really mean net front guy there. Think Ben Sherratt, but playing forward in that he's going to be there at the front of the net. He's going to make your life miserable. He's not afraid to get in your face about it, but he's got to kind of keep himself in line there because the rocket penalty kill has struggled and they already get penalized a lot. Stay out of the box, have a lot of success. I, I don't know if he's going to be right in the lineup for their game on Thursday night. I would probably like to see that over Riley McKay, who I think has been, perfectly fine but i think there's more upside in a player like florian jackai and i'm mostly excited because i think he's going to be a really big hit with whatever coach is there next year because you have such a base to build on for someone that's growing into their body now has time with a more pro training staff longer off season to kind of get himself ready and everything in there plus he'll be around his brother who can kind of walk him through how a lot of these things go so it's going to be a really exciting weekend here. Um, the Rocket play Thursday and Saturday. I'm assuming Jack I will be in the lineup one of the two games, if not both. But I wouldn't. 
I'm not banking on him starting right away like David Reinbacher did, but I've been wrong before. So now, however, we're going to make fun of the Metro division because nobody wants to make the playoffs, apparently. And we're going to get into all of that and more coming up next. But first, I it, we know buying tickets for things is hard. It is such a frustrating time. Baseball season is here, and you can deal. You're dealing with scalpers, and you're dealing with hidden ticket prices. And maybe the view from your seat isn't what you saw on the website that was there originally. But right now, GameTime.co is here to make that so much easier for you. You can pick out any specific game or matchups, or anything that you'd love to attend that is on game time site right there. And you can find the deals, zone deals, flash deals, anything for that event on the site. And there's no hidden fees involved. The price you see is the price you're paying. And you can see the view from your seat. So if you want to go to a baseball game, you're going to be able to know exactly where you're going to be watching the players from and what that's going to look like. So take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Some terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. That is the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are back here at Locked On Canadians, and we had talked in. Uh, the show previous that, hey, the Canadians hold the keys to the final playoff spot right in their hands going into tonight where it's like the Flyers, if you guys want to keep pace with the Red Wings and the Penguins and the Capitals, et cetera, you got to go through the Montreal Canadiens. You know, a team that is currently in nine out of is ninth at, or is in the second to last place in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> Wow, that took a lot more effort than I thought to get out of my mouth. But anyways. <laughs> Still more effort than the Flyers made tonight. Yeah, very clearly. Like you, All you have to do is beat this team that is not good. They are not trying to be good right now. This is not the Devils or the Sabres where they had playoff aspirations. Not legitimate ones. Every team wants to make the playoffs if we're being very honest with everything. But you came in and you stunk it up like an open sewer, you stunk it up, and now you're on the outside looking in because the Capitals won tonight, barely, but they did, and the New York Islanders won. The Islanders now with 87 points hold the third Metro playoff berth, non-wild card spot, and the Capitals hold the second wild card spot. The Penguins are one point back, the Red Wings are one point back, and the Flyers are two points back right now. Tampa Bay has clinched a playoff spot with 95 points. They're not going anywhere. No team is catching them or knocking them out of that wild card spot, unfortunately. So all I can say is the Canadians now play the Islanders on Thursday. And the Islanders, despite uh, some of our good friends uh, saying, we don't know how they're here either. They have a minus 21 goal differential and they're in the playoffs. <laughs> the Capitals have a minus 40 goal differential and they're in the playoff spot right now. The Penguins are plus four, despite being entirely mediocre all year, and the Red Wings are plus two. The Flyers are minus 29, and the Sabres are even. Nobody wants to make the final playoff spot. It's a bunch of teams. Like, the Red Wings are the only team here that I think if they don't, if they make it, they're not going to get the wrong message made out of it here. The Penguins need retooling. The Capitals desperately need retooling. The Islanders need retooling. The Flyers need retooling. The Flyers don't just need retooling. They need a wholesale, like they need to rinse everything and start from the beginning. I'm like, no one wants to make the playoff. No one in the Metro wants to make this. They keep doing the like, ah, well, you can have it. No, you go first. No, you <laughs> go first. No, I insist. No, I insist. One of you claim the damn playoff spot already. Oh my God. Like it is being left up to the Montreal Canadiens now to decide who is going to make the playoffs. Three out of the last four games are against the teams in the hunt. The Flyers, for all intents and purposes, are done after tonight. They have to win out, and they can only end with 87 points. 
So they are behind the eight ball here. They have one more game played than the Capitals and the Penguins and the Red Wings. They absolutely have to win out and then hope the Canadians beat the Red Wings twice. And the Red Wings haven't exactly been a model of consistency. <laughs> Nobody wants to get the second playoff spot to go either play the Bruins or the Rangers. Hold on here. Let me do the math here. The Rangers can get six more points, 116. The Bruins can all basically. Yeah, I did my math right here. Even if the Rangers lose out, the only the only team that can pass them in the standings is the Bruins right now. And no one wants to apparently play the Bruins or the Rangers in the first round, despite the fact that the Rangers are notorious choke artists in the playoffs. I guess the <laughs> Hurricanes could too, but also notorious choke artists right now. And I mean, if you look at the Bruins <laughs> last year. <laughs> oh my, just somebody make the playoffs. Like somebody just cleaned the last spot here because you are now relying on teams that have everything to play for against a team that has nothing to play for. Right. And as we've seen, when you put the Canadians in a game where it's like, ah, they're going to lose, whatever, who cares? They come out and play fantastic. So like, we, I, yeah. I have, it's, I'm sorry. I've talked so much. I just, no, 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 no. It is. It's fun to be the playoff spoiler. And this is what I understand. Like I remember back in the day when the Canadians used to make the playoffs, I would be like, why are there narratives about being playoff spoilers? Like, what is it? Hockey night in Canada. Nobody cares, but you know what? Actually I do care because it's fun. It is really fun to be in this position. Like, I, obviously, there's not a whole lot of stuff to live for for this season. So uh, for me, like this pettiness and this kind of um, insane position the Habs are in where they have absolutely like everything that they do will leave their destiny the same, essentially, like they're going to be in the same drafting spot, essentially, but it could drastically alter the lives of three other teams. And it's ridiculous. Yeah, like, okay, Red Wings schedule. Because I don't know who they still have to play. They play the Penguins on Thursday, basically can't lose, Toronto on Saturday, and then the two uh -oh. games against the Habs. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want Toronto if uh, if I were the Red Wings. But also, uh, the I believe the Red Wings lost tonight. They if did. If I'm not mistaken. So they, yeah. So this is like, they're now they're desperate. They are in the same spot as the Flyers that they have to win out. And they're in a little bit better spot because they're higher in the point total. And then the Islanders, their remaining games here, the Canadians on Thursday, the Rangers, which is another blood feud after the game tonight, Saturday, the Devils eliminated basically at this point on Monday, and then the Penguins on Wednesday. The, it's the, I cannot wait to watch and I usually don't like make an, uh, um, uh, and sorry, Dan and all of our friends at lighthouse hockey and everything. I don't make time to watch an Islanders game because it's not always for me, but when the going gets tough, the Islanders get violent and the games just devolve into a mess. I can't and wait they end to up see. Winning. And that's the thing. Like whenever they do this, they end up winning. I'm not going to bet against Patrick Waugh needing big wins over teams to get somewhere right now. The final, the next week and a half are going to be a bloodbath in the Metro. And it's very fun to be like, we can just play spoiler to all of this at this point. The Canadians can just play spoiler to all of this. If they, if they win out, like not even including the senators game, that can be whatever it is. If the Canadians win out against the Islanders and the Red Wings, the Penguins are going to sneak into the playoffs somehow where you have Sidney Crosby who does, you know, crazy stuff on a team that is quite frankly, terrible. The Capitals are, no one seems to know how the Capitals are here in the first place. There's so many funny narratives that could happen, especially if that team in the second wild card spot goes on to beat the one seed. It'll be truly the funniest thing you could imagine right now. The Montreal Canadiens hold the keys to everybody, which means my mentions are going to be diabolical for the next week at this point but i gotta say out of this i think the islanders are gonna squeak in i think the red wings might do it i think the canadians at some point are either just gonna kind of they did it at one point last year they kind of ran out of steam a little bit down the stretch i think that the red wings might do it but i'm hoping the penguins make it and continue to ignore all the flaws with their team currently uh, I'm eliminating the Flyers and I'm eliminating the Sabres from this completely at this point. 
I'm hoping the Red Wings do it because they're one of the few teams that I actually would be rooting for to make that. Uh, the Red Wings in the playoffs just feels right. I know I infuriated a bunch of people here with that, but it's our show and we'll do what we want. So, uh, yeah. Laura, do you have any parting thoughts? I want to see the Red Wings too, uh, despite the fact that our nemesis cheers for them. I, I just feel like it would be fun to see them back. And at the same time, I'm just, I'm so sick of the Penguins. I, I don't want to hear about the Penguins. Like in, in this segment alone, we talked about them way too much. Uh, I would like them to go away, but I, I do like the idea of them learning all the wrong lessons. I think a Kyle Dubas offseason after acquiring Eric Carlson and then missing the playoffs immediately leads to maximum hilarity in there. Uh, sound off in our comments or uh, on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Who do you want to make the playoffs? Who do you want in those fi- in that final wildcard spot? Who do you want to see out of the mid row make it? Uh, what do you want to see from the Canadians the last couple games of the season? Let us know. Laura will be back tomorrow with another fun episode. I will be back after the Thursday games. I promise I have some work-related stuff. You can follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Laura is at The Active Stick. I am at Scott Matla. Locked on Canadians at gmail.com for everything else that you might need. Folks, we are signing off, and we will see you all next time.